Alright guys, I'm going to be showing you some new uh, features of the Banshee VGT controllers. One of the big features is instead of having a drop down menu for the communications ports, you'll be able to just connect to it. You'll be able to select multiple turbos, depending on what turbo you're trying to control. Map sensors, you'll be able to select what map sensor you're currently using. Same thing with exhaust pressure sensors. You'll be able to select what truck you have and where you're tapping into for the engine RPMs. Turbo RPM, same thing. Has a digital wastegate, so basically you'll tell it you want to enable or disable this feature. By default, it's disabled. You would select how much boost pressure you want, and then once you reach that, the controller will then open up the turbo and attempt to mitigate how much pressure you're making. Same thing with the speed limiter. Now the engine speed, this is designed to be a minimum position. So this way if you have, uh, if you're putting on a car or a high RPM engine, when uh, you push in a clutch or you lose pressure for whatever reason, you don't want the turbo to go to uh, all the way forward so it's really, really tight and embarking a turbo, potentially breaking some stuff. So this here will make sure that whatever the engine speed is at RPM, will make sure the turbo doesn't go below that position. Now one of the big uh, differences is going to be the, the control logic. So the primary one now is uh, dry pressure to boost pressure. So what you're saying is you want 1.5 psi of dry pressure to 1 psi of boost pressure. So what's going on right now, the reason why I have 22 psi of exhaust pressure is because I have my uh, cold start feature um, enabled and I'll show you that here in a minute. So boost turbine logic, this is uh, essentially the same thing my older versions had. So you would tell it what PSI you want at which position. You would also, instead of using this, you can say you want to use turbine speed to be able to do it instead of turbine speed. Exhaust brake control. So basically this is for the exhaust brake knob. You're saying you're going to start at 85%. When you rotate the knob it will go up to 100%, which is full brake. Engine speed disengage is once your RPMs drop below this RPM, turns the brake off, and then your exhaust brake trigger threshold. So depending on what engine you have, this is a 0759 common rail. I connect to the engine ECU, so whatever that threshold coming in, it has to be over that to trigger the exhaust brake. If you have a VT44 or if you're using a momentary switch on accelerator, same thing. So this is my cold start assist. So basically what's happening, is when you first start the engine it's going to close to brake all the way to 100% close and what that's going to happen is it's going to build back pressure while you're cranking on it and that will help start the motor up. Once the engine started and it's running like it is now the turbo is going to attempt to keep 20 psi of exhaust pressure. To turn this feature off you got to rev the motor up to 1300 rpms as you rev it the controller is still going to try to mitigate that 20 psi of exhaust pressure. The wet stack feature essentially the same thing. So basically once you start driving it turns uh, the cold start assist off and then once you go back to an idle if you idle for more than two minutes then it's going to return this feature on which is going to load the motor down. That's going to help preventing uh, glazing of cylinders which essentially is wet stacking. So as you can see the exhaust pressure PSI is fluctuating a little bit because the turbo is attempting to mitigate 20, um, 20 psi. Now it doesn't take a lot to really change the dynamic of the exhaust pressure, so that's why this is the command and feedback positions bouncing back and forth. And then if we go back to uh, the cold start page, I have 1300 RPMs, so if you watch the engine RPM, I'm going to rev it up, hit 1300 turns the feature off. Now if we wait two minutes it's going to kick back on and do the same thing. It'll just kind of sit there and wait. Uh, for diagnostic purposes if you're having an issue 
you come to this page, it's the input voltages. It shows you all four inputs. So you have your boost pressure voltage, exhaust pressure voltage, your exhaust brake trigger. This is the trigger for the, um, <clears throat> the exhaust brake. So if you have a momentary switch for the ECU, I just turn the brake on so I'm getting 12 volts. If I turn it off, I get zero volts. The exhaust brake knob increases or decreases how much braking force you have, same thing. So that's 100%, rotate it back, and it goes down to zero. Uh, come back up to controller inputs. Uh, so for map sensors, you can use any map sensor you want as long as it's a gauge. I was experimenting with some um, absolute sensors. They work fine, but not every sensor is queried equal. So if you look at uh, AEM, the brass series, the brass series has a 3% plus or minus error rate. So the default table, all, pre all gauge sensors is 0.5 to 4.5, 0.5 being zero. When you connect the AM brass sensor, you actually might be at 0.3, high 0.3s to 0.4, which can end up being a three to four PSI difference. Uh, if you look at their steel series, their steel series are, um, I think, 1% uh, variance. So not all sensors are equal. If you look at the um, glow shift, they're even worse. Um, so I highly recommend using autometer sensors um, or Honeywell sensors. Honeywell sensors are probably going to be the best and they're cheaper than uh, a lot of the other guys out there. And I want to say there's a 0.5 variance. So you're looking at, you know, half of a percent. Still waiting for it to get back on. Oh, there we go. It's been two minutes. I actually think I had to sit at one minute. Oh, two minutes. But yeah, that's it. So now you have uh, the cold start assist and you have the, the wet stack feature, which is really awesome. Just like on a 6.7, so if you guys ever see a 6.7, um, when you first turn, turn it on, it's cold outside, close the brake down to help warm the engine up and to help load it. And then the same thing, if it's sitting for too long, it'll close the brake up again. Um, so the whole goal is to mimic as many features as you can from the 6.7 and to give you guys the best experience. If you have any questions, comment, send me an email, call, text, whatever. Alright, thanks.